Why do you want to tell your story and why do you feel like recording this? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like uh, one of the best ways for your legacy to, to live on is, is through story. Um, a lot of people along the way have inspired me and helped me, um, either through direct uh, coaching or mentorship or also just through hearing their story. So maybe my story can, can help someone else out there that's going through some of the things that I've gone through and, and can inspire them. Miss Walker, thank you for wanting a verse from me. Apologies for the wait, sometimes it's hard to get the distractions up off you. For enough time to jot your thoughts, but fuck it, this morning I got you. I'm thinking about you. I heard you just had your another little baby. Congratulations, I hope you got through it with no complications. I find it amazing the way that you juggle your kids, the biz, the fame, the bitches that's hating. They sit around waiting for you to fall off like the album I'm making. But I hope that you're taking a little time for yourself. Still in a moment or two to unwind Between the hectic sounds of your precious baby crying Do you clear your mind? Must be a lot going on I hear it in all of your songs Niggas been doing you wrong Family been doing you wrong Days you feeling like you on your own I wrote this for you to put on Thank you for sharing your life, your voice is right Yes, sir. You wouldn't believe it. We waited for such a long time for my fire, and we even waited two years longer for a Saturday night together. That's so right. We're celebrating all night. Nobody's got work tomorrow. It's time to party. So what's it like playing uh, uh, with Jadrian and how is he like on off field? What what are your thoughts on him? Um, playing with Jadrian is is a very unique experience, I would say, because he he like changes so much on the field compared to off the field. Um, he is very open-minded. He's very welcoming as a person off the field, very friendly. Uh, but on the field, he's very competitive also. 
also to the point where you need to say like Jay you need to chill for a second he just wants to win and he wants it now whereas we need to kind of sometimes we need to take a step by step he's a he's a really good friend of mine he becomes that we have a very good uh, cooperation on the field as well so it's a, it's a very fun experience because I feel like as a player I'm like that myself uh, on the field there's no no nonsense and we want to win and off the field, we, we like to have fun, you know, joke around and all that stuff. So um, I feel like he, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a great competitor. He's a really good football player. He, he, he wants to win. Uh, he likes to win. I feel like as, as a, competitor, a competitor too, it's great to have like that in a QB. I feel like some QBs can be quite like sadistical, kind of chilled. But it is great to stand next to someone that, you know, wants to win, has that drive to win. And so, yeah, like that, it works out perfectly. How did I meet Adrian, huh? Yeah. I remember that. I, I met him in, uh, in Braunschweig in uh, 2018. We played for the same team back then, and uh, it was the second year in Germany. He came from Kirkdorf. Um, he's been around. I mean, I, I read about him. He was like a Division One quarterback from Weber State. He's like super gifted, fast, strong. And I was really excited about him joining the team back then. and. Uh, yeah, and then we met and we just hit it off, man. He's a, he's a really great guy. And he was the quarterback for another team back then and he hit me up and he was like, hey man, uh, I got the call from Ryanfire. Do you think I should I should take that? Do you think that's that's something that would be a good idea? And I thought about it for for a bit, you know, because what do I tell him? Like I know he's a, I know he's a competitor, I know Ryanfire was looking for for the right guy for them. Do I do I hand Ryan Fire this uh, this gold nugget? I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I told him definitely take the opportunity, um, go out there and then ball in the ELF. It's so much fun. You were here for for Hamburg, and uh, I think if, if it's still in you, if you still want to go out there and be competitive, you should definitely go out and do it. Adrian is definitely a leader. Um, he, he knows how to how to reach the people and lead by example. He doesn't make many mistakes. Um, He's a great friend. That's that's definitely something that, that sticks out about him very much. Like he's uh, he reaches out. We always keep in touch. He's um, he's always been there for me whenever we talk. And uh, all around, just a great person. There's, there's nothing bad to say about him. It's really a, a brotherly feeling. Yeah, like, like, uh, it seems like we met and it just clicked, and that was it. So I'm very very happy that I know him. Even though, and I have to say, we beat him in the first year in the ELF, you know, got that ring over him, so I always have that, but uh, he seems to be on the hunt himself, so we'll see. We'll probably meet in the finals, if you ask me. My name is Silas Nasida. I'm playing running back, receiver, quarterback, whatever, for the Helvetic Guards in the European League of Football. Uh, met Jay Adrian back in 2018 and uh, just had similar experiences. We were both Americans coming to, to Germany to play football and just connected over that. And how would you say he's talked about in the league? Uh, this is good. Um, I mean, I think, I think Jay Adrian will be one of the best quarterbacks to ever come through Europe. I think a lot of the reason that's the case is because he has a very open mind to, to being in this con being on this continent. I think a lot of players fail in this league because it's it's just different. You have to be able to ad adapt to a whole different culture, a whole different la language, and everything's different. A lot of guys come to Europe to end their career, and, and their it kind of goes downward from there. He's just going up. What makes Silas such a special person is his, uh, his outlook on life. Um, I've followed his vlogs and played against him over the last few years, and he always has been a guy that's taken something that's rough and turned it into a positive, and I think that's the key to life. He, um, from, from what I've seen and what I've heard and what he's told me, he had some rough things happen in college and had football taken away from him, but he found a way to keep persevering, and now he's out here playing professionally in Europe, and I've been through some of the same similar things, um, having football taken away from me, so every opportunity that you get in life, you just gotta, you gotta take
can make the most of. Um, my mom is not able to come out to the games in Europe, and she's become a huge fan of Silas. And Silas's videos have been a way for her to almost feel connected to what my experience is like, uh, because he does this, such a great job of capturing really the lifestyle, the culture, the football experience, and everything. Adrian's mom literally was <laughs> send me postcards. My mom is Silas's number one fan in the whole world. It's great. <laughs> She'd send me these cards from the states, like on holidays. Just like, hope you're doing well. All these things, and I was, I was like, I never understood why like someone would just do that. And I was like, how could a, a guy just making like dumb videos in Germany be that impactful? Uh, but then when I think about how you know, if I was a mom and my son was in a different country and I couldn't see him, but then somebody was giving me a, a picture of maybe what it was like, I, I would understand how she could be connected. And so. Heather, I love you. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm forever grateful for Silas inspiring me to keep going through hard times and to give my mom a little bit of a perspective on my life. I think it's challenging, especially on a young man, to not have his father there, um, just to show him what, what it really truly means to be a man. But thankfully I had an amazing mother, uh, an uncle that was super, super supportive of my dream of to, to be a Division One quarterback and to be a professional football player one day. I would say that I was a very um, angry person when, in my early teenage years and football kind of allowed me to have a release for that anger. So I think football is a lot like life. There's gonna be good moments, there's gonna be bad moments. It's all about just pushing through and yeah. It would have been a lot better to have my dad in those years, but I think I was really, really lucky at the same time to have such an amazing group of people fill that role in my life. Football is a, a special sport and I love it so dearly um, that to see now people in Europe embrace the sport and share that same passion for me, it just, it makes me so happy to see them be happy. Um, after the game, you know, going over and signing autographs or taking pictures. It's just one of those special moments where you're able to um, connect with someone uh, and it, it, it's via the game of football. So I think it's special that it brings so many people together and that the fans are so loud and so passionate and bring so much energy to our team here. I mean, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to be the quarterback. There's a lot of responsibility thrusted on my shoulders and I, I don't take that lightly. I touch the ball every single play and the whole organization is relying upon me to, to make the right decisions with the football, to make the right decisions on and off the field at the same time. So I really cherish um, what I've been given, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And I, I don't shy away from the fact that I know that I need to do things the correct way and lead other people and also just handle business and, and conduct myself in a, a manner that everybody would be proud of. Finally on camera together. Um, yeah, I guess for me, this has been really, really cool. Um, like I said, I'm really appreciative of Max and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, getting to see a brief glimpse into my life, learn a little bit about me and couldn't have asked for a better person to tell my story. I can only give it back. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I can't even describe how much that's going on in the process of a project like this because it seems like I'm just following someone with the camera but you always have to have a plan, you always have to think of everything, you have to be aware of every situation to cover it the right way. I hope you guys enjoy watching this and get to know him better and I hope you guys fall in love with the sport, um, fall in love with Ryan Fire, the whole organization, the, the team and all the impressions you guys are getting out of this, or maybe you already did it, I don't know when we're gonna blend this in, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciative. I was actually shocked at how many times we were able to just do everything with one take, man. One way Jay and Max <laughs> made it happen, baby. Yes, sir. That's a cut. Yeah, man, it started as a 14, 15 year old kid with just a strong arm in Lakeland, Florida, looking to get an opportunity somewhere. Took me all around the world, I've now seen 
over 25 countries and played football in over six countries. And now I'm here at Ryan Fire having the best season of my life, enjoying life uh, around a great group of guys, great coaching staff. And I'm, I couldn't be happier and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity that I have now. And I think that all my experiences over the last few years have led me up to be prepared to where I am now. I always knew in the back of my mind that something greater was in store for me, but I just didn't know what. And I'm just, man, I'm just so grateful.